بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فلا يضر الا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد again i say jazakum allah khair for attending may allah reward you everyone who uh, who left their house for the sake of learning and may allah the same way we united here and those brothers and sisters united with us in paltak we unite in the peak of heaven on the judgment day and prior to that may allah shade us under his throne on a day where nothing will shade anyone except those among those who will be shaded as those who loved and met each other for the sake of allah we can clearly hear say wallahi we only met for the sake of allah unless anyone's doing business here behind my back anyone doing that <laughs> no one is doing that so inshallah we can say wallahi we met here for the sake of allah that in itself is a benefit itself and those brothers and sisters who are email me jazakum allah khair for your emails and concerns and i say ahabbakum uh, allah alladhi ahabbtumuni fi may allah love you the same way you loved us for his sake and his sake only we have been this is the fifth series the fifth the fifth uh, uh, this is the fifth uh, lesson in a series that we're having on the legends of Islam, heroes of Islam. The first one we talked about is Nuruddin Zinki. Who's going to give me something about him quickly? And don't tell me he's the teacher of Salah al-Din. I don't want to hear that. We've heard it too many times. Who is he? Give me a... Revival of the United Okay, so I don't want to hear from you. I want to hear from someone else. What did you say, Kamal? Go ahead. Huh? Okay, the Mujaddid. But how did he? All the guys were talking about Mujaddidin. All these guys are heroes, Mujaddidin. Give me something. By having a good environment for the Muslims as far as... How did he have a good environment? Huh? Ilm and Jihad. Unique characteristics about him. He put influence on Ilm and Jihad. Okay, inshallah, every day you give me something about one of these guys. So jog your memories before you come here. This is, we don't talk, so come, you get inspired for half an hour or an hour, and then you leave out of here, we don't, we, like, like you came in here. The second one is, Salah al-Din Ayyubi. What did he do? Don't tell me he liberated Palestine. I don't want to hear that one. He, he revived the learning in uh, places like uh, Egypt. That's well good. Conquering and, uh, Taken back over Muslim land. He kicked oh. the Shia. Not, not, not kicked the Shia. That's the <laughs> best thing he did. That's exactly. Jazakallah khair. He kicked the Shia out of Azhar and he closed the Azhar down because it was Shia. And then when he ousted all the scholars, he tightened their lid on them and they all left. He closed the Azhar and established schools like Al Azhar. And then when he seen that the Shia had left, then he reopened, he tightened the lid on him, no longer can you preach hatred of the Sahaba, in your deviant, disgusting belief, you can't pre- do that here, or your bid'ah. So what he did after that was he reopened the Azhar later on, and it's the same Azhar you have today, not the same kind of style that it was during Salah al-Din Ayyubi. Then we took, Uqba bin Nafi, who was he? He's a fighter, <coughs> But, uh, he opened the, the, the North Africa, like Tunisia, Libya. Okay, he opened near from Egypt and upwards to Libya and all that. He's the conqueror of that. How did he conquer? By a sword? By how? By da'wah. His Amr ibn al-As left him over there on the border of Egypt and Libya. And he didn't say, okay, I'm going to kick back and relax. I'm in charge over here. I'm going to enjoy life. He went on the borders, giving da'wah in Libya, until, what's today Libya? Until they all said, we'll embrace Islam, and we'll fight with you against our own rulers. Just bring your army here. 
And that's when Umar ibn Khattab agreed to have the army go over there. The next one we took on the same day was Al Nu'man ibn Muqran Al Muzni. Jabir, where did you get Jabir from? Those are side stories. Those were side stories. We're talking about the main ones we've had. I suggest if you don't know these guys, cool it guys. If you guys are going to horse around over there, don't. don't. Uh, 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 the next one was uh, uh, Al Nu'man ibn Muqran Al Muzni. Uh, a great heroic Sahabi. What did he do? Give me one thing he did. He opened Persia. How did he die? He died in Normandy. Where? How? How? Uh, he, he said to them, ask Allah. Huh? He slipped on the blood of the Persians he was fighting. He's the one, basically, if you want to describe him in a one-liner, he destroyed the superpower of the Persians. Superpower of the Persians and the Romans was like the USSR in the United States back in the Cold War. He annihilated the superpower of the time, which was the Persians. Okay, then we talked last time we were here about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. One line about him, what is he? What did he do? Is he, little, is he really the fifth Khalifa? Is he really the fifth Khalifa? Between him and Uthman and Ali was tens, tens of years. Why is he considered the fifth, fifth Khalifa? He revived the Ummah like the time of the Sahaba. Also, what do you say about him? One of the most just Khalifa. If you want to hear an example on a most just Khalifa, actually who revived it, is Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Another thing about him, I kept saying, I probably said it maybe 20 times in the lecture. Crying. Every time I told you he had a weak heart, every time he, someone came, a woman came to him and sat in front of him, and she began to cry. He didn't even know why she was crying. And he started crying, just because she was crying. He was weak hearted, and this became especially true and more so after he took Khilafah. Why we study these heroes, again I always say and reiterate, because we've been in a society that teaches us legends of sports, legends of football, soccer, maybe movie stars, and we, that's why you see our kids today trying to imitate those people, the wrong kind of people, the people who animals, pigs and horses and donkeys are more valued than they are. Those people you see on TV, wallahi, the animals and pigs are worth more than, that's what Allah said, إِنْهُمْ إِلَّا كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَرْ They're like animals, rather they're worse. Not, not just like animals. Allah didn't say they're like animals. No, He said they're even worse than animals. These are the guys that our kids see on TV, that people look up to, oh, he's making 16 million dollars out of this movie, and he's doing that out of that movie. These are the people who, when we teach our kids about these men, we're supposed to teach them to think that they should belong under, under our feet. The men we look up to, the men we look, alaykum salam wa rahmatullah, the men we look up to are the heroes. Ask them if they can hear. Can they hear? The men we look up to are like these Sahaba and these heroes that we talk about. Most of the ones I'm talking about are not Sahaba. And I told you why. Why did I say I'm not going to mention a lot of Sahaba? Why? Some people think in their mind that these guys are too high. They have the Prophet ﷺ amongst them. That means we, you know, we can never be like them because the Prophet ﷺ was like them. But that's wrong. But just to keep that out of mind, I'm going to give you generations from after the Sahaba all the way up to, you know, few centuries ago or so. Our topic today is about a great hero. This hero, probably most people don't know nothing about him. Rarely anything about him. But they know his book. Everyone knows his book. It was supposed to be a surprise, but Saeed told everyone, you know, Saeed, we're going to fire him one day. He put it all over the internet. And, you know, it's the book that I think everyone in here has it. Anyone here not have Sahih al-Bukhari? Anyone here? You have it on your shelf, Al-Quran, and next to it is Sahih al-Bukhari. And we want to look at who this man is. Who this man who wrote this book is. Bukhari. You know what Bukhari means? And I specifically say this to those who are non-Arabic. That this heroic man is a non-Arab. He's what you would say if he was living today, say he's a Russian. He's a Russian. Because he's part of those lands that were taken by Russia. So he's a non-Arab. Look at this hero who I mean nearly every household today, nearly every household today has his book in his house. He's a Russian. He's an Arab. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدَلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَمْثَالَكُمْ And if you turn astray, Allah will replace you with people better than you. He's an Arab. Like who? Who did we take who was an Arab prior to this? Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi. 
Kurdish. He was a Kurdish, a non-Arab. However, keep in mind when I say non-Arab, their origin is a non-Arab. They learned Arabic. Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi and al-Bukhari speak Arabic better than I can ever speak it or I spend my whole lifetime learning it. However, when we say they're non-Arab, their origin was non-Arab. That puts the burden on you to go learn Arabic. That's why our class here is supposed to get full. Unfortunately,